Hello, welcome to St Gregory's Minster in Kirkdale, North Yorkshire. Today we're going to be going behind the church into the woods to look for a cave. And it's in that cave in 1821 that a discovery was made that could have potentially changed history as we know it. When it was thought the cave might contain evidence, archaeological proof of the biblical flood as recorded in Genesis. So, we're going to try and find the cave and explore the remains that were in there that could have changed the face of history as we know it, but in actual fact changed it in another way, unexpected at the time. My name is Chris, this is Church Searcher, and I'll see you after the map. So Kirkdale here is right on the edge of the North York Moors National Park, which is predominantly made of sandstone, geologically speaking. But this valley here is actually all limestone, and we're stood in the middle of quite a large quarry. It extends right down the hill behind me here. And it was here in 1821 that the quarrymen working made a discovery in the form of two caves. There's a small cave mouth just behind me here, and there's another large one around the corner, which we'll look at in a moment. And it's inside those caves they found them stuffed with bones. And this being a, a rural agricultural area, and these clearly being animal bones, quite large in size, they thought that they must just be the remains of cattle, cows from the area, and they actually crushed them up and used them to fill some of the potholes in the road. And we've actually just come up the road from where the ford crosses the stream. But it was out one day that a local geologist was walking through the area and he came across these bones in the road and spying the quarrymen here he inquired with them and they explained that they'd actually found these bones in the caves here and having a quick look at the caves he realised that there was potentially a significant discovery at hand here and that's when he got in contact with a famous geologist at Oxford University William Buckland. So this is the mouth of the smaller cave, the first cave. See, it goes a long, long way back. Big, long tunnel bored back into the stone there. Now, I'm no caver, so I'm not going to attempt to go in there, but you can see the distance it goes back. But this is the smaller one. And this is where William Buckland came, but it's the, in the bigger cave that he made the major discovery that he became known for. So it's around the corner of the quarry that you can just see the second cave up behind me there bathed in that pool of sunlight. It's the bigger cave, and this is where William Buckland was led to and made an astounding discovery. Essentially, the remains of dozens and dozens of exotic animals, which shouldn't really be here in Britain, as far as he was concerned. So, you have the bone assemblages of lions, tigers, bears, elephants, rhinoceroses, hippopotami, bison, deer, reindeer, boar, horse, wolves, elk. So in his mind, he was suddenly got very excited because here at last was proof perhaps of Noah's flood as recorded in Genesis in the Bible. 
here in the middle of Yorkshire, a tiny cave has been a collection point for all these exotic animals that have been washed away in the floods, ended up when the floodwaters receded, getting trapped here in the cave. Or so he thought. But perhaps as he stepped back on a lunch break from the cave mouth here, stepped down into the quarry beneath us, he began to ruminate on that cave opening. And he began to realise that that cave is very, very small for whole animals to be washed up into. The, the mouth of the cave is only three foot tall at its highest. You can only really crawl in on your hands and knees. And some of these animals that were in there, elephants, hippos, rhinos, couldn't have washed in there, surely. So he went back up in the cave and started exploring even deeper. So that's what we're gonna do now. So this is the curved mouth here, and you can see it's probably only three foot high at its highest, and as you look in it splits up into two. So it's inside the caves here that along with this huge assemblage of exotic fauna in the form of the fossilized bones that were discovered. Uh, William Buckland also discovered the remains of 300 individual hyenas. So this made him start to re-evaluate his original theory about what was going on in this cave. As he looked at the remains further of all these exotic animals inside the cave, he began to see gnaw marks on all of the joints of the bones of those huge animals that have been deposited in here. And so that's when he began to develop this theory that this was in fact the den of a pack of hyenas dragging back their prey to feast on in the caves here, not deposited as the form of a biblical flood. Also supporting this theory, they found a fossilised layer of uh, faeces from hyenas in the bottom of this cave. And William Buckland famously spent the next couple of years exploring about 20 caves all around England looking for further evidence of this. And he actually imported a hyena to Oxford and studied its eating and habits to get an idea of what was going on in these caves. So in 1823, William Buckland published his research and it caused quite a sensation. And although it wasn't evidence for this biblical flood as it originally postulated, it did, however, completely change the nature of archaeology and prehistoric research at the time, heralding in a new era of, uh, sort of scientific rigour in research that hadn't been seen before. So according to William Buckland, he calculated that the deposits in this cave dated to around 75,000 years ago. But more recent archaeologists, archaeologists have done testing on the uranium deposits in the calcite layer above where the bone deposits were. And they calculate it's actually 130 to 115,000 years ago, the last interglacial period essentially. So a brief period of 15,000 years or so between the Ice Ages when there were all these exotic animals roaming around being preyed upon by hyenas and dragged back here to the caves. So there you go, a bit of a different church church story today related to Gregory's Minster in Kirkdale but I hope to see you in the next full-length video. Until then keep church searching. Wait, did you hear that? There's something Something from down there. Something from in the caves. Wait.
Uh, wait, no, please, no!